In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in order to begin using stock gaps to put the odds of winning trades drastically in your favor. This is a technique I use a lot, and I'm excited to show you how you can use it also. Then I'm going to show you exactly how to use stock gaps while sharing with you one of my real life examples. By the end of this video, you will know when and how to use stock gaps to consistently put cash into your pocket from a stock and option trading. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will show you an example of a trade I'm in right now where I'm using my knowledge of stock gaps to put the odds of winning the option trade drastically in my favor. Briefly, what is the wildest stock that you've ever traded? Did you make money on it? In the comments below, let me know what your wildest ride was in a stock and if you were able to turn it into a profit. First, what is a stock gap? A stock gap is an area on a chart where the price of a stock has moved sharply up or down and there's little or no trading in between there. As a result, the stock's chart shows a gap in the normal price pattern. Here you see an example of three gaps in well-known pharmaceutical company, Pfizer. Pfizer is a stock that we have bought outright in our retirement account and we actively sell options in Pfizer in our option trading account. As a matter of fact, we are short some put options on Pfizer right now. Notice the three areas where the stock gapped up and down. On November 9th, at the far left arrow, Pfizer gapped up from around $36.75 to around $38.35. You see that the high from the previous day, November 6th, was lower than the low of the next trading day. Six days later, on November 17th, Pfizer had another gap, but this time it was to the downside. Fast forward a few more days to November 30th and Pfizer gapped up again. Here we see a very stable, solid dividend paying company that had three gaps in a span of less than one month. What's interesting is how fast these gaps got filled. The first gap back on November 9th got filled in six days. The second or middle gap got filled two days later and the third gap took the longest but it still got filled in less than three weeks. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to trade in what I consider solid, mature, stable, and generally, but not always, dividend paying companies. I do trade some non-dividend paying companies, but predominantly, the companies that I trade options in and buy outright are dividend paying companies that have been around for quite a while and have a solid track record behind them. The statistics I'm about to share with you are for those type of companies. If you are trading in newer companies or penny stocks, these numbers probably won't apply. So just keep in mind that we're talking about solid, stable, and mature companies here. On the website bioequity.org, a study was performed on up gaps over the 24 year period between October 27th of 1989 to October 11th of 2013. The study was done on the 30 Dow industrial stocks. So similar to what we like to trade, there were solid, stable companies that have been around for a long time. The study only considered up gaps since it was assumed that these companies were strong enough that any down gaps would eventually be filled because the company's stock prices were not going to zero, which is a pretty safe assumption. So it might be safe to say that in a solid, stable, mature company, down gaps get filled pretty much 100% of the time. The exception would be if the company basically went bankrupt. But going back to our up gap study, during the time frame of 1989 to 2013, when a stock gapped up, there was a 91.4% chance that the up gap would get filled. In other words, your odds were a little better than 9 and 10 that the up gap would get filled. So it didn't happen 100% of the time, but it was pretty close to 100% of the time. Our knowing that up gaps and solid stable companies get filled 91% of the time, how can we use this information to put cash into our pockets? Well, one thing the study did not point out is what the overall time frame was for these gaps to get filled. Obviously, a smaller gap will be filled quicker than a larger gap. Smaller gaps tend to get filled quickly just due to the normal price movement of a stock. But now that we know that the odds are in our favor that an up gap will come back down to get filled over 91% of the time, if we look at other indicators such as volume, we can determine with a relatively high level of certainty when the stock will come back down to fill the gap. Let's go back to our same chart on Pfizer. As you can see at the bottom in the white arrow where Pfizer gapped up, it was followed by multiple down red days. The volume was decreasing, so the downward selling pressure was slowly decreasing, but there was still definitely some pressure to the downside to fill the gap. Conversely, once Pfizer started heading back up and had several gaps up, it continued for seven days until it stalled out and began to decline where you see the yellow down arrow. Notice down at the bottom where the curved yellow arrow is, it shows that first there was an increase in volume on those down days or more downward pressure on the stock. Then the red down volume days began to subside in strength 
as Pfizer filled the gap and began to level off. Let's hone in on that last up gap scenario. Let's talk through this to make sure that you understand exactly what was going on here. On the left, you see the white oval up top and directly below that, the white arrow at the bottom. That's where Pfizer first gapped up. It continued higher for several more days, as you can see by the white arrow, on stronger and stronger volume. Then the first red down day after the gap up, we see that it was starting to lose some steam. It did continue higher until as you see at the white long arrow attached to the white oval in the volume area, there was a strong down day that followed a strong up day. And as you can see in the white oval, the volume was pretty much equal on that up and down day. At that point, we knew that Pfizer was losing its upward momentum, was most likely going to turn around. And that's exactly what happened. That was followed by six down days. Isn't it ironic that Pfizer continued to decline until it hit that exact spot where the gap was filled from several weeks earlier where the orange arrow is? That was the first green up day since it changed direction as you can see in the candlesticks and volume. At that point, volume began to get back to normal and Pfizer started to consolidate around that $36.5 to $37 price area. An easy way to think about gaps is that they tend to act like a magnet. So whenever you see a gap, just know that if it's an up gap in a solid company, you have a 91% chance that that gap is going to be filled. The timing of gaps filling is uncertain, but by watching the increasing and decreasing of volume and candlestick movements, you can have a pretty good idea of when that gap is going to get filled. If you like more information on how we use technical analysis to time our outright stock purchases and when is the right time to sell put options on stocks we track, once you finish this video, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled How to Trade Using Technical Analysis. Next, I'm going to show you several other charts to confirm what we've just talked through and show you actual positions that we are trading in right now so you can see that this is indeed a real technical tool that you can use to improve your trading. But if you like the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap that thumbs up button. That simple act, it really goes a long way towards supporting this channel and it helps me know that you're finding value in this type of video that I worked so hard to produce for you. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will show you an example of a trade that I'm in right now where I'm using my knowledge of gaps to put the odds of winning that option trade drastically in our favor. This may give you an idea of a similar trade that you can do to put the odds drastically in your favor. Here you see seven more charts where up gaps and good solid companies came back down and got filled. You see Johnson & Johnson, it had two gaps that were filled. MasterCard had five filled. Medtronic had five that were filled. Microsoft had one that was filled. Procter & Gamble had two filled. And here's a chart that doesn't have that many gaps, but you see the one that it did have here, it got filled and this company is Pepsi. We could go on and on and on, but just remember that 91% of the time, these up gaps get filled. You just wanna keep an eye on your volume. As long as that volume is strong and you're seeing increases in price action, it's not going to turn around and come back down to fill that gap yet. It's only once that upward momentum begins to fade that you can expect the gap to be filled. Also, keep in mind that there is no preset, predetermined time limit on how long it will take for a gap to fill. It could take a day, months, or even years, but 91% of the time, those up gaps get filled. The question might come up, why do these gaps tend to get filled? Well, think about what's happened here. The reason why a stock gaps up is because there was some kind of surprise. That means that there are people who own that stock that were counting on the movement to take longer or sometimes even a lot longer than it took that stock to go up in value. When that happens out of the blue or the blink of an eye, some of those traders are going to want to cash in before the stock comes back down. That's only one reason why stocks tend to fill gaps. There are all kinds of other conspiracy theories like market makers cause gaps to be filled, but there's really no proven data on that. Simply put, we don't know the exact reason why gaps tend to get filled, but what we do know is that at a very high percentage of the time, those up gaps get filled. If you'd like to see how we use other technical indicators to drastically put the odds of winning on our trades into our favor, when this video is finished, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled Multiple Time Frame Support and Resistance. At the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to show you an example of a trade I'm in right now where I'm using my knowledge of stock gaps to make a calculated decision based on those 91% odds of winning on this position. This will let you play along with me at home. And here are the details. I've spoken about this Disney Leap position several times in previous videos. 
Here you see the details of my current Leap call option position in Disney. If you're not familiar with how Leap call options work, no worries. I'll give you a link in a few minutes so you can find out more about them. But the Leap position I'm in is that I own one long-term call option at the $110 strike price with a January of 2023 expiration date. Since I first entered this position 11 months ago, I've been selling short, nearer-term call options against my long Leap call. In fact, I've been selling two call options against it. Yes, I'm naked one call option since I have sold two calls and I only own one. Briefly, the reason why I sold two options is that when I first bought in this position, volatility was really high. So I sold a leap call option that was $65 out of the money to help pay for some of that volatility. I had no idea that Disney was going to rebound as fast as it has. I also have been selling short 30-day call options against my long leap call option. As a result, I'm in this position with absolutely no money out of my pocket. I've actually been paid to be in this long leap position, also known as a poor man's covered call. The returns have been awesome. But the challenge I'm trying to fix now is that Disney has really gone up super fast over the past two months. As you can see, towards the right upper corner where the two red arrows are back on November 6th, it gapped up over 10%. And on December 11th, it gapped up again another 10%. That's highly unusual for such a stable, mature company like Disney to have two separate gaps of 10% within one month's time frame. But so is the nature of the markets that we're trading in now. This position was extremely profitable even up until the second gap. But once the second gap happened, it's hurt our overall position a little bit. So let me tell you my thinking based on my knowledge of gaps and how it's influencing the way I'm planning my trades in Disney. The first thing I want to ask is, does Disney have a track record of filling those up gaps? As you can see, by the blue arrows, there's been three times over the past couple of years that Disney has gapped up. And you see the result. Each one of those times, the gap was filled. So we can feel relatively confident that Disney is a stock that follows that 91% fill rule. Of course, there are no guarantees. Disney can be a one-off and it could be a shooting star that goes up and never comes back down, but the odds are highly unlikely. In fact, the odds are less than 10%. Now, if I were a newer trader, I got to be honest with you, at this point, I'd probably cash out right now. I'm up overall in this position, so it's a winning position. And my decision to stay in this position may end up costing me profit, but I don't think it will. Remember the odds are in my favor of over 91% that I'll win. So based on my knowledge that gaps tend to be filled, I'm going to sit tight in this position. I have a short $145 call option, which expires on January 15th, that I'm going to roll sometime over the next two weeks. I'm going to be looking for Disney to come back down to try and fill one or both of these recent gaps. If that happens, then I'm going to close out the January 2022 $150 call option that I sold 10 months ago and pay for that by selling a put option to Disney. This position is a very small portion of my portfolio and I really like Disney as a company. So I'd like to add to this position. Can you see how getting financial education, like what you're doing right now, how it can help you to make calm, well thought out, financially smart decisions? I've learned over the years that the more knowledge I have of a situation, the calmer I feel when adversity hits. The same is true in options and stock trading. What you're doing right now will have a huge impact on your future decisions. I encourage you, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to this channel. This channel is all about trying to help you make better, more profitable option and stock trading decisions. If you'd like more information on how we use leap options to generate awesome cash flow returns on a monthly basis, check out the video series in the link above in the description below entitled Leap Options. If you'd like some help finding the best stocks to trade in and notification of when is the best time to roll option positions or enter them, check out the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. On a daily and weekly basis, my patrons get alerts on the exact trades that we are doing. They also get a list of stocks every weekend that we plan to either buy outright or sell options in. We take a lot of the time and hard work out of finding option trading opportunities. And a quick shout out and a big thank you to all of our current Patreon members. Thank you so much for your support. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below where I share with you more of my secret tips and tricks on trading options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.